Welcome in to another edition of SC Checks In presented by First Texoma National Bank. We've got former all-conference Southeastern basketball player Stephen Coley with us. Stephen, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I appreciate you taking time today to uh, to talk about your experiences at Southeastern and 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 then talk about some unique things that we have going on right now. Stephen played basketball here from 2011 and 2013. He's from El Paso, Texas. As I said prior, he's an all GAC performer, uh, 605 career points, 403 boards, 76 assists, 40 blocks. Got it done for us. Uh, got it done for the Savage Storm as well. So um, we'll just kind of start there, you know, growing up in El Paso and then, and then coming to Southeastern. Why Southeastern? Well, uh, you know, I originally got recruited to play at Grayson and Denison, mm -hmm. and I played two years Juco ball there. Um, and then that's where I met my wife. And really it was, it was, uh, the next stop for us to go for education, to get our four year degree. Um, my second year after at Grayson, I had my knee, my first, my second knee surgery mm -hmm. and they pretty much told me I'd never play again, you know? Um, so I took a year off from playing and my first year at Southeastern, you know, it was, it was coach Kelly's first year with coach McGill. Um, and, and I was just itching to try to get back at it. You know, I, I, I had a personal trainer who worked with me and told me, Hey, if you want to get back to playing, I'll get you there. And, and I worked, I worked my butt off, you know, try to get there. And, and uh, you know, I walked into coach Kelly's office and he was actually out recruiting. And that's when I was talking with coach McGill and, you know, coach McGill put me through some workouts. And the funny thing is that coach uh, green was uh, recruiting with my Juco coach. And uh, he, you know, my Juco coach had some great things to say about me and coach Kelly and coach McGill gave me the chance and opportunity and the rest is history. You know, it's funny. I, uh, I talked to uh, Kelly yesterday and, uh, that's the one thing he said to me was he told me that exact same story about how you got recruited here and, and how that kind of transpired. So, uh, and that was actually verbatim. He said he was out recruiting. You came by coach McGill was there and the rest is history. So, so you get an opportunity to play at Southeastern. What'd that feel like to be able to get back on the court after being away and knowing you might have an opportunity to play? It was, it was just like, you know, like on cloud nine, you know, I was just, you know, after being told by a few doctors that I'd never get to play again and then getting the the chance at a coach at a D2 level, you know, I took a, a year off of basketball um, and at the at the D2 level, I was just so excited to to get that opportunity. You know, I, I wanted to do anything and everything that I could to make make it you know, so where I could actually play. I just didn't want to be a part of the team. Like, I, I wanted to get out there. You know, I wanted to be on the court. I wanted to be the one putting in the minutes. I wanted to, I, I wanted to be, I wanted to be out there. So, you know, it was just, it was just like a blessing in disguise when coach, when all that fell into place. And, you know, it was just, I don't know. It's hard to describe it. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, you know, you, you kind of hit that on the point. Your, your competitive drive takes over, you know, you're there saying, okay, I'm here. Well, I want to play. You know what I'm saying? And so yes. um, that that's that's big there. So what was it like playing at Southeastern for you during your two years? Oh, it was it was wonderful. Um, the coaching staff was awesome. My teammates were awesome. You know, it, it, we started off as just teammates. And by the end of the year, you know, it was just one giant family. I still talk to a lot. All, all those guys that I put the two years there with some of them are in Brazil, Japan. Mm -hmm. Um, some are in Serbia, some, you know, some are still here in the States, but we still keep in touch. And, you know, and it, even though we don't see each other every day, whenever we talk to each other, it's just, you know, we pick up right where we left off, you know, and, and, uh, you know, playing at Southeastern, it was just having two wonderful coaches, great coaches, and then making lifelong friends was just, you know, it's just, it's, it's awesome. Well, it definitely worked out being a all Great American Conference selection. So one thing uh, Kelly said when I was talking to him about you is he said that uh, the, the thing that, that always stood out with Steven was he played so hard and he wasn't afraid to get down low and get after guys. And so uh, I think that's a huge compliment as well, just talking about uh, 
how he all, and, and I remember watching you play, you know, cause I was in grad school here at, at the time. And, and I, I do remember that as well. So tell me some things about Kelly. What was it like playing for coach green? Um, how, what does he mean to you right now in your current state? Right now he's, he's somebody that, that I could go to for advice. You know, he's like a, like a mentor. Um, you know, if, if I have any questions about anything or, you know, cause I'm a coach as well. You know, if I haven't anything like that, I know I can reach out to him and, he, and he'll help me out to the best of his abilities. And it doesn't even have to be in that aspect. If there's anything I need, you know, if, if I ever need anything, I know that I could reach out to him and, and he would, he would help me in any way possible that he can, you know, he still sends me Christmas cards, you know, uh, till this day mm-hmm. on Christmas, I still get a Christmas card from him. So, you know, he, Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he's, he really, he really made Southeastern enjoyable for me, him and coach McGill both, mm-hmm. you know, cause, uh, uh, my junior year at the end of my junior year, my son was about to be born my first son. And we were going to Bartlesville for the turn for the tournament. And it was, we were leaving on the day of my last ultrasound for my son. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he pulled me in the office and said, Hey, and I didn't even know anything about this. I guess he reached out to my wife and got in contact with her and found out all the details. Cause I didn't say a word to him about it, you know? Um, and he said, Hey, uh, you're not going to be traveling on the bus. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And he was like, you're, you're going to go to that last ultrasound and coach McGill has a school vehicle and you guys will catch up with us and drive up there meet with us after your last ultrasound. He goes, I don't want you to miss that as a father, you know, and, and just with him doing that on his own, you know, him and coach McGill, it just took everything that my level of respect that I have for him in the program, you know, more than just like a, a coach, you know, mm-hmm. it was, it was like almost, you know, like, like a father figure, you know, I mean, I have my dad, you know, and everything, but, but just them making those kind of decisions and let me know that, Hey, family is more important than basketball. Right. You know, and, and that they were willing to do something like that to where I, I, I don't miss something like that in my, in my child's life. You know, it was just huge. It was just big for me. And, and it just took my level of respect, like I said, for both of them to a whole nother level. Well, you kind of hit the nail on the head, the type of person and the type of uh, coaches we have, you know, those are the things they look, they look uh, outside of just what happens between the lines, you know, and that's, that's a sentiment to them and what they have going on. So get done playing. As I said before, get uh, recognized as an all conference baller. Um, What about after graduation? You know, what, what was life like right after you got done playing? It was, it was weird, you know, because a, a lot of my friends, you know, I, I graduated with my, my bachelor's and, and a lot of them that, that were, you know, lower classmen, they were, they were going to two a days, they were hitting the weight room, you know, they were, they were getting ready for next year. Whereas for me, I was like, well, you know, what do I do now? <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't have mandatory practice. I didn't have, you know, I, I mean, I still went and played open gym with them when I could and everything, but. I started getting my mind towards, well, you know what? I have a family now. I have my son. He's already going to be almost two years old, Um, you know? And so I I started, uh, I had a friend who who graduated with me from Southeastern as well. And he was getting in the graduate uh, graduate program. So me and he, he got me into it. And me and him started on our uh, master's degree that following year. So that, that was something I jumped into right after basketball was over. But it was it was different because I had my whole life I've been playing basketball. My whole life I've been working out, you know, looking, well, I, I got to make time for this. I got to make time for that, you know. And then all of a sudden it just comes to a screeching halt and I don't have to do it anymore. So it was it was a big life adjustment for me. So so you graduate, you kind of transition with that that life adjustment. You, you mentioned, you know, you had a two year old. Uh, where'd you go? What'd you do? Um, kind of take me through your timeline about what you did to what to now what you're doing. Okay. Well, uh, my situation was a little different since I, I did have a wife and I did have a, a kid. Um, and I lived in Denison. I live in Denison. I still live in Denison. Um, Coach McGreen let me live at home instead of on campus. So every night I got to come home to my wife and come home to my son, you know, and, and I got to see them every day. Um, 
but I still live in Denison. I've been coaching here in Denison for six years. Um, my wife's also a teacher and I have two boys now. One's fixing to turn nine and one is six, you know, and, uh, and we still, you know, Southeastern still a big part of my life. I try to, I wish this COVID stuff would go away so we can make some home, some home basketball games. Yeah. You need to come you know. check that out. Um, you know, but that's, you know, and I'm a coach, um, I'm a high school girls basketball coach right now. Um, I'll be, I'll be looking to go for a head coaching job position here and here in a little bit. I'll be applying for, for that position. See if I get that. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you know, I just, I've been living here in Denison and trying to raise my family and keep tabs on Southeastern because they've been doing a lot of great things, especially last year. We definitely had success uh, last year and the year before um, being back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances. I tell people all the time, and especially in our region where we're at, it is so hard to go one time, but to go back-to-back -back yes. is, is huge. Um, and so it's been a unique year for us this year. And, uh, you know, I, but, but we're, we're super competitive and, you know, I love watching us play and, and it's, it's a, it's going to come down to the wire for everybody um, in our conference for this year. And so, that's one thing we're super excited about. I do know you, uh, you stay pretty tuned in and locked in on what we have going on. Uh, and so I'm just going to, I'm going to ask you, uh, what do you think about the new facility upgrades we've, we've made over the last year? Um, you know, you probably worked out in the old weight room and then you see the new, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What yeah. Oh man. Compare that new weight room compared to that old weight room. That's a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that old weight room was underneath the, the guest side bleachers. Yeah. You know, and and but uh, and all the pictures I've seen of the new weight room and everything that it looks like, it, it's amazing. You know, that 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 is a really good tool that these kids, when they come in and they see that weight room, they're going to their eyes are just going to to me, my jaw drops and my eyes get big. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'd be excited to go in there and be able to work out in there and get stronger and, you know, and everything like that. And, you know, to me, I wish I had something like that when I was there. But, you know. I did, I made do with what we had, you know, and it, and it worked out for me, but the, the, definitely the facilities you guys have now are, are awesome. I'm definitely jealous. Yeah. Well, when all this stuff kind of, kind of calms down, you need to buzz up here. We'll, uh, we'll definitely give you the tour. Uh, we haven't had a grand opening with it, you know, just because of COVID and all that kind of stuff. Uh, right. Stuff going on. Uh, just a couple more things. Like I said, I appreciate you taking time sitting down with us talking about Southeastern. Uh, what else? What else is there you want to you want to talk about or bring up that I didn't cover? You know, just I, I just want to talk about like the, the whole, you know, Southeastern in general. Like I love the campus. Um, you know, it's real easy to get around. It, it's it's real easy to find classes. I love I love enjoying walking around campus from one side to the other. If I had to go to for one class in the education building or, you know, I had to go all the way to the uh, over the safety building. Uh, you know, the dorms, all my friends had dorms from mm -hmm. to Choctaw Tower. Uh, you know, it just everything about Southeastern, I was there all the way to the cafeteria. The cafeteria is awesome. You know, it, it's just, it makes it, it has a home feeling. I had a home feeling, even though, you know, I didn't live there on campus. When I was there walking around, it just felt, I, it just felt like home, you know, and then to have those two coaches to be able to walk in there and, you know, every time they see you, they ask you how your day been, anything going on. You know, they, they were always talking with us, chatting with us, try to stay in tune with us, you know, and it, it really, it really made my time there enjoyable. It really did. You know, and, and like I said, I can't say enough about Coach Green and Coach McGill of when my, with my two years there with them. Well, they, uh, they definitely had uh, high things to say about you as well. So we'll kind of close with this. Um, I ask everybody this, you know, when I say Southeastern Oklahoma State University, you know, what does that mean to you? To me, it means family, mm -hmm. you know, family. Um, that's big to me, um, you know, because like I said, when I, when I first started there, it was just a bunch of teammates and two new coaches that I knew nothing about. But by the time the end of the year was, it was all about family. You know, we were all close. We're all brothers. Um, I've made lifelong friends, you know, with all, all my teammates from the two years that I was there and the two coaches when I was there. You know, to me, when, whenever someone asks me about Southeastern, that's the first thing that falls into my heart. My, my heart and everything I think of is just the family. 
because because to me that's what it was when when uh when, when I was there and, and all my teammates with with my those two coaches you know, I, I love hearing about everyone's unique perspectives and what they think about Southeastern and their experiences. But, you know, um, it always comes back to those, those common words, home, family, you know, best times of their life, grew up the most, had people there that cared about them. And, and you know, I think that's so important to hear that from, from people that attended here, because I think that's kind of something that goes under undervalued a little bit. Um, and I think it's a little cliche, but but yeah, you know, everybody I talk to, that's kind of the, the the thing that they come back to, and they say that, well, this is why, and it's because I felt X, Y, and Z because of the people and the the people and my teammates that were around me. So, well, Stephen, I appreciate you taking time today, sitting down, talking with us. Um, you know, this has been great. I love reconnecting with everybody and talking to them about their uh, their their times at Southeastern. So, Storm fans. Former Savage Storm basketball player Stephen Coley, all Great American Conference basketball player Stephen Coley, <laughs> represents the Savage Storm in Denison, Texas, not too far from us, needs to come up here and check it out. If you ever see him around town, ask him if he's come back and checked out the new facility. So there it is. Take care. Go Storm.